All right. So as you know, just to clarify, when we're looking at those pictures, you said the issue in July in picture 151. What's the problem you see there? Um, the problem that I see there um, is primarily with respect to the type and nature of the crack that is observed and the notes uh, that have been written in the context of the um, in the context of evaluation of the damage. So if I um, if I look at that, hold on, I just need to um, look at the picture. Um, basically, uh, what we see is that we see a, uh, a crack that's diagonal. It goes from the top left of the screen all the way down to the bottom, which basically we treat these as, as shear type of cracking. Shear force is the force that is um, collected throughout the entire length of the member as it's being loaded. And then it reacts and it transfers to the abutment. But then in the beam, when we look at it, it's like a cutting or a shearing force that pushes the material uh, from one side, stays stationary, the other side tries to move up. So that's what the shear force is. And we have a crack there. And the inspector's note says um, uh, up to three feet long, uh, one foot four inches wide, um, and it's on the west face. So, so the thing is, there is a six inch deep spall and delamination. So uh, that, is, that is worrisome because a, a chunk of the material has fallen off and that has actually exposed the um, re reinforcement rebars as well as the tendons to the corrosion. To the corrosion. Um, and it says, actually it further says with exposed and broken rebar. So it, there has been enough stress there that has failed some of the rebar beyond their ultimate strength capacity. So we don't design for the failure of the rebar. Um, and that, that itself is a sign that load is not being transferred to the end of the beam. But the end of the beam, the load cannot go straight uh, in a horizontal way. The load has to switch and turn around and go down into the, um, into the abutment. But then with this crack, as a shear crack, the um, it's, it's worrisome because shear failure in beams is catastrophic because it is sudden and it doesn't, there is not much deformation until we see um, the complete failure and fracture. And that's what, that's what would worry me. I see that they had fixed it before from the patchwork, even before the July inspection. So I see both on the top and the bottom, there are some, um, whether I don't know what, what they had used but it was just some type of a repair repair material. But the repair material um, is not really functioning at this stage because in the presence of the cracks, um, no chemical is gonna penetrate through the repair material. They're just gonna get around it. Um, that's the part. And then at the bottom, it says reduced bearing area um, of um, um, one, one foot wide, seven inches long so the bearing the definition of the bearing has to do with the contact area between the girder and the abutment the section in the bottom as you reduce that area big and it could be because of the crack or it could be because of the fact that um there is there is damage in there to a point that it needed the repair um that means that there is less area to transfer the force from the girder into the abutment and that would mean that if area is reduced for the same force, for the same traffic load, you will have higher stresses, higher compressive stresses that are basically transmitted there. Um, and that's that's the, that's the challenge that I see. I'm not uh, so worried about the failure of the tie down because the tie down is a secondary. Uh, so if the tie down is failing, it means that your primary system which is that connection is not functioning well. So it's um, the tie down is telling us that uh, we need to pay attention to the girder itself um, and whether it's replacement or complete um, or complete total rehaul of the, of the section. And so does that make you think that there was a problem before the tie down snapped in December or when it was discovered in December? Does it make you think that there was a problem that led up to that beforehand? 
There is a problem that led up to that. There was a problem in, I mean, we can clearly see that the problem is severe in July to a point that um, personally, I would say I would have to drop everything and I would just sit down and just address that particular connection. Uh, but then how much repair was done in that particular area, it is, it is not known to me. I, I'm just looking at the pictures. And what I see here is that the repair, the, the, going from the picture from the left um, as the July to the December, there doesn't seem to have been much repair done on the girder itself. And that's probably um, probably my concern um, that the work done on this in December was not the final work to be able to open up the bridge and release it because a majority of the bridge is still suffering from significant amount of distress as we see and just to be clear so the crack and the issues you're seeing in july are a concern yes and simply patching it at that point you don't think is sufficient i i do not in my professional opinion um i would say no it's it's this is more than a cosmetic repair um this is this is um this is the ability of this structural system to transmit the loads to the foundation and it's not it doesn't seem that it has worked and you said do you think in that july photo you see the girder slipping up in the top right corner or well, do you think that's know, more in december well they know so the idea of slipping could be because of rotation um or it could be because of lateral movement or it's not necessarily slipping what we have here is that we have a reduced bearing area and reduced bearing area could be due to the crack that has gone all the way down to the bottom and actually put a portion of that bearing area out of commission so the the it's not necessarily the slipping part it is just the reduction of the bearing area because if you reduce the bearing area, you're going to be increasing the stress by any means that you would that you would have. And do you think this issue with the crack could have caused the tie down to break? It could allow for the tie down. What would happen with the cracking is that the stiffness of that connection is going to be affected significantly. That's item number one, which means that now that member that was supposed to be perfectly fixed in other words the the gear there should have stayed without any rotation at that point but if you're putting that big crack there then it's going to act like a hinge and it's going to rotate if the gear there rotates at that point it would carry the um the slab with it and it would also deflect more so there would be more um that rotation would basically create some kind of an opening at the top. Um, I don't know if that picture that we have shows is if that's a crack or not on the December, on the December picture um, on, um, on the top. Um, so if that would happen, it means that that rod, which was supposed to only carry tension force because of the rotation, it's going, it's being bent. Um, because it's it's supposed to be it's fixed at the top and the bottom, so it's rigidly attached. And if you remove or allow for the rotation to take place at that joint, that's going to add additional stresses on the rod tie down. That's not even supposed to happen because uh, that rod has very little um, bending uh, stiffness. So that's why that bending stiffness would add additional stress and would cause the fracture. Right. And and you're saying it, it's bending potentially because it's bearing more, in layman's terms, it's that bearing, bearing more. more than it should have because of that crack? No, it's like you take oh. a piece of you take a piece of wood, let's say you take a dowel and you grab it by both hands and then you start bending it. That's the way you break it. Because that material as a round material has a lot of stiffness in carrying axial force. But when it comes to bending, that rod is not going to be able to carry the bending. So what you're imposing on it is that you hold the rod at the bottom fixed and at the top you're bending, you're tilting it. That tilt is going to generate bending stresses that could significantly add to the existing stresses that it's taking. So it's going to fail in tension then. 
Um, because and that's because and that's because of the crack you're saying, or the crack is right. causing so that. So basically, what happens is that, I mean, it's a sequence of events. The crack causes the joint to have no rotational resistance. When it doesn't have any rotational resistance, it starts deflecting under the load. So as the traffic is driving over it, it's just going to basically sh take a shape. It's going to dip in the middle of the span, and it's going to stay rigid at the top. But that dipping at the in the middle of the span, let's say like um, acting like a like a bowl type of a thing, uh, it would mean that the, the corners are going to rotate. The rotation would generate bending in the axial rod and it would generate additional stresses on top of what it was intended to carry and that would cause the failure of the rod so my point is that replacing the rod is not going to fix any of our problems we need to go back to the root cause which is the the type of crack the diagonal crack that we see as a um as a shear failure in transmitting the load and its inability to carry the load. It could be remedied by maybe beefing up that support, maybe extending the support by uh, a few feet to be able to get a few more years out of that and provide for kind of eliminating that portion um, of the crack portion from our load carrying capacity. You cannot but, count on anything transferring beyond the, those cracks. Because you think, I mean, should the crack have been a warning sign back in July? I believe so. I, I think it would be a warning sign, um, and I don't know how. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't ignore it personally. Um, and, and just to be clear, I'll wrap up because I know we talked yesterday, and you're going to go to class. So, have you worked on bridge failures before, like in terms of failing material? And I, I, I this is the failure of the materials, and we study beams, how beams transfer the load from a fundamental point of view. But this is. Um, in service condition and it's a complicated structural system because there are multiple paths for the loads to be transferred from one point to the other point and one has to actually make models of it one has to actually do structural analysis one has to be able to you know one way of strengthening this section is maybe not do anything to this but then build up around it uh, like crutches to be able to carry the load that this is not able to carry. So I do not see myself as an expert in the area of uh, bridge repair and maintenance, but the fundamentals of mechanics of materials and how these type of systems work are very much um, common among all the structural type systems. And okay. These okay. Um, anything else you want to say? Is that just, no. I want to thank you for clarifying the difference between July and, and December. So thank yeah. you. They're both concerning. That's okay. that's my point. Yes. Great. Well, thanks, Barson. I appreciate the time again. Good luck in class. Thank you. All right.